What's up guys? Welcome back for our week 8 match of the GBA, the Global Battle Association. This is a very late upload. Reason being is that Nexus and I played uh, pretty late on Monday night, and uh, then a whole other uh, like plethora of complications came up. Uh, and then the initial video that I had recorded for this game uh, corrupted as well. So, unfortunately, I'm having to re-record this game, but it's fine. Uh, we are up against Num Nexus and his uh, Pittsburgh Pichus. Let's go over the team that we are facing. So he's got Zygarde, 100%, huge threat. Uh, Z Celestila, Mega Venusaur, Primarina, Rotom Heat, Uxie, Buzzwool, Zoroark, Z Mimikyu, Gorbis, and Porygon Z. So... Um, when the draft stream was happening, uh, I heard a lot of comments about Nexus having one of the fatter teams, uh, in the league, and I absolutely agree. Uh, it's definitely super fat, especially that Zygarde, uh, as well as that Mega Venusaur, the huge, huge defensive walls, uh, Buzzwall on the physical side, obviously, uh, and Yuxi definitely has some, uh, some walling properties, but, um, but he's got very bulky offense. He's got a very threatening team offensively as well. If we look at Primarina, uh, Zorark and Mimikyu to me just murder my team. Uh, they, they actually really do a lot of work to me uh, because of their stabs and coverage. So uh, there's that. And then there's always the option of setting up with like Gorbis or Porygon Z or even the, Cel the um, Celesteela or Zygarde themselves. So all things that we're going to have to watch out for. Uh, so let's get into our team. We'll, we'll try to make this snappy. First member on the team is a Kronovi, the Tyranitar running weakness policy. Uh, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, Crunch, and a Dragon Dance. Uh, the speed on here is so that at plus two, I believe I outspeed Scarf Zoroark, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, or at least what I expect him to run is speed if he brings Scarf Zoroark. Uh, we have 124 in HP and 180 in attack. The attack investment was enough to, to be able to deal with... Uh, pretty much everything uh, once I had a Dragon Dance up plus the weakness policy, so uh, that was the idea there. Uh, Ice Punch, I need 100% for the, the Zygarde, 100%. Uh, Thunder Punch is on there for the Celesteela as well as the uh, Primarina, and then Crunch hits everything else, essentially. Uh, there's nothing really on his team that resists it except for Buzzwool. Uh, and now, Buzzwool, while it is a pretty big threat to my team, it also, if it comes Scarf, it has to choose a move to lock into, which is not easy against my team considering I have Lunala, Tornadus, um, just really good pivots like Nidoqueen and whatnot. Uh, so it, it makes it a little bit harder on the uh, on the buzzwall for sure So it's not a definite bring and I figured my, the rest of my team that I'm bringing can definitely wear down buzzwall enough to the point uh, Where I'm not as worried about it and that uh, a plus one ice punch or a plus three ice punch or thunder punch would be able to break through it. So that's the idea behind this Tyranitar. Uh, also, if you look at his team, he's got a lot of super effective coverage on there that doesn't knock me out. Thousand Arrows from Zygarde, Heavy Slam from Celesteela, Giga Drain from the Mega Venusaur, Play Rough from the uh, the Mimikyu, uh, any water attack from the, uh, the Gorbis if Sand is up. Uh, Primarina is a little bit more of an issue if it does have um, a choice specs on it. U-turn uh, from Uxie. There's just so much stuff uh, on his team that would trigger the weakness policy and a lot of, of the stuff that I expect him to bring. So th that's why we're running this. Um, and to facilitate this, we have uh, a little bit of a setup on the team as well, which you guys are going to see in a bit. So moving on to the next member on the team, we have Tornadus T49%. Life Orb, Hurricane, Knockoff, Icy Wind, and U-Turn. I have 36 HP on there. That was just to guarantee that I could take uh, two 1,000 arrows with no rocks up from uh, Max Adamant Zygarde, I believe, even though I'm a hasty nature. Uh, we got 84 in attack. This is to boost the power of U-Turn. Make sure that it can knock out Zoroark after rocks because that thing is a massive threat to the team I'm bringing. Uh, we have Icy Wind on there specifically for the Zygarde and to slow, da slow down anything. We're faster than his... Uh, Zorark, which means that anything that comes in on Icy Wind is automatically slower than us, even if it's a Choice Scarfer, so that's really good. Uh, I can just U-turn out or Hurricane afterwards. Uh, and then Knock Off is there to be able to get rid of Celesteela's item, because the leftovers are going to be a problem, and once they're gone, uh, I have a 100% guaranteed wall to Celesteela. So, that's, uh, that's Tornadus, very straightforward. Uh, not much more to say there. Moving on to the next member, we're once again bringing Scarf, Lunala, Bat Signals coming back with Moon Geist Beam, Ice Beam, Psychic, and Sleep Talk. Uh, max Special Attack, max, uh, almost Max Timid, enough for the Zygarde uh, to, to make sure I outspeed it at plus one, if it's uh, also at plus one. Um, so my Scarf does that, of course. We have Moon Geist Beam because he doesn't switch in too well to that. Uh, Mimikyu doesn't switch in at all to it because it breaks straight through Disguise. Uh, which is really cool. It's uh, it's like Photon Geyser, so that's awesome. We got Ice Beam and Psychic on there as well. 
Uh, Ice Beam is mainly for the Zygarde, and Psychic is to be able to hit his Mega Venusaur and his Buzzwool, obviously. So, uh, very straightforward. Sleep Talk's on there because Mega Venusaur is a problem, and if it gets a Sleep Powder off on anything on my team that isn't this Lunala, I'm losing a very important member. So, uh, we need the Sleep Talk on there. Uh, as threatening as Venusaur is to Lunala because of the option of having a uh, knockoff on its set, uh, I still need to bring this last move slot as Sleep Talk uh, over something like Trick, potentially. So... That's Lunala. Moving on to Goat the Reuniclus, which I did not make shiny for this battle, unfortunately. Once again, I goofed, sorry. Um, but we have Psychic, Reflect, Light Screen, and Recover. So, we mentioned Titar earlier. This thing sets up pretty easily on him, even easier with the uh, the screens up. Light Clay on there. Uh, this is a very uh, tailor-made set to take on um, Primarina. If it's Specs, like I, I can come in once it gets a kill and get up a Light Screen and I'm fine. Uh, so long as he doesn't crit me, and Reflect is going to help a lot against Zygarde, Celesteela, and whatnot. Uh, and once Celesteela no longer has its leftovers, it cannot beat this Reuniclus. I will 1v1 it all day long, <laughs> It'll, unless it's like Metronome. Uh, but if it's Metronome, it's already been knocked off anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I really just um, set up a Reflect, recover up on it, and then Psychic it all the way down, and it has no form of recovery outside of like Potential Rest, which Celesteela doesn't ever run, because it doesn't ever need it. So, uh, yeah, that's Reuniclus. It, it helps out a lot of the members on the team, uh, mainly Tyranitar and uh, Tornadus, but it can definitely also help Lunala in case its Shadow Shield is broken. And, uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'm just giving my, my team as much support as I can with this thing. So, let's go. Moving on to Grandina, the Salamence. So, I made this thing uh, be able to take Zygarde's uh, plus one uh, thousand arrows after rocks, two of them, uh, with this spread. Uh, as well as the speed is there once again for the Zygarde. I'm not sure why I made it 163 over 162. Uh... <laughs> That was a little bit of a miscalculation, but I don't think it ended up mattering. Uh, we got Hidden Power Ice, Defog, Roost, and Refresh. Refresh is on there because Toxic is uh, an option. His Mega Venusaur can get a Sludge Bomb Poison. Uh, because I am bulkier, I'll be able to take on the Mega Venusaur decently well. I'll be able to maybe get a Defog off on it. Hidden Power Ice uses this as a pivot for it, so uh, Refresh helps there. But mainly it helps against Glare. Um, Zygarde's Glare means that it potentially can just set up a sub in front of me and start coiling up or dragon dancing, and I don't want that. If I get rid of the paralysis immediately, uh, then I can continue to HP ice. If he's coiled, then he's never gonna be faster than me. If he's dragon dance, then obviously we're gonna have to find another way to deal with that thing after if I do end up continuously getting uh, fully paralyzed, even trying to go for refresh. Uh, but uh, but just having this option here, I think is gonna help a lot. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. Moving on to the last member on the squad, we got Hohenheim, the Cobalion, rocking close combat, iron head, toxic, and stealth rocks with leftovers. I'm a little bit more of a defensive set, as you see, I have a lot of HP. Uh, this is to be able to take on Mimikyu. I also have the attack investment in there to be able to uh, kill Mimikyu after rocks uh, with iron head after its disguise has been broken. So the idea is that I can switch in on Mimikyu. His Mimikyu is more prone to attack rather than set up against me because I don't have uh, fairy switch-ins with this team. Uh, Cobalion takes neutral damage and I have two mons being Salamence and Tyranitar that take super effective. And then two mons that take super effective, one of them four times from the Shadow Claw. So Swords Dance is never really... Um, I don't want to say it's never really an option, but it's usually going to be the least tempting option, I feel. Uh, which is why this is my switch in uh, to his, uh, his Mimikyu, because I take very little from Play Rough. I take like 23% uh, after leftovers, so it's a four hit, uh, it's a five hit KO uh, if rocks aren't up. But even if rocks are up, I only take like 2% from them, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and uh, the speed on here is, of course, for the Zoroark, because we have close combat. Zoroark's a massive threat to this team. Once again, we're bringing the two Psychic types, so Dark-type coverage is going to be insane. Life Orb Torn doesn't take hits well. Um, Titar is going to get blasted into the next dimension from a Focus Blast if it hits. And uh, Salamence doesn't want to take those uh, those Dark Pulses either, so very scary uh, for my team. I can't really switch into it. Cobalion's really the only thing that can come in on a Dark Pulse, assuming he doesn't predict it and goes for Focus Blast or Flamethrower. Uh, I can come in, get a boost from his Dark Pulse, and then just close combat him and knock him out. If he's Scarfed, he won't knock me out in two. And uh, if he's not Scarfed, he's going to die to the close combat, assuming no Sash. Uh, so that's that. And Toxic is on there mainly for the Zygarde. If the Zygarde feels like it has a free switch into me, I can always go for Toxic. Uh, the turn it comes in, and uh, if he chooses to go for 1,000 arrows, good for him. Uh, if it's banded, then obviously that's going to hurt. Um, and... Um, 
if he's uh, if he's not banded though, if he's just like a sub Dragon Dance set, or uh, if he's um, if he's just plain old Dragon Dance, then I can go for Toxic and then go into Salamence on the Thousand Arrows, maybe die to a Stone Edge or a uh, an Outrage after. Uh, if he chooses not to set up again, and then I can get in my Reuniclus and get up a Reflect, and as long as his, uh, Zygarde's on a timer, we're pretty much good to go, so, that's the entirety of the team, that's, uh, that's the squad that we're bringing for Nexus this week, uh, I do want to preface, uh, two things, one, I want to apologize to you guys and to Nexus for getting this up so late, uh, obviously I did explain that there were a lot of, uh, factors out of my control, unfortunately, and, uh, due to the time that we played the game, um, it, uh, it made it a little bit tougher as well. Uh, also, apologizing to Nexus for uh, not being easy to schedule with this week. Uh, I made it kind of tough on him because I uh, I said that I would play on a certain day and then I didn't end up being able to play on that specific day. Uh, and then we just kept pushing and pushing and pushing back and we ended up playing on Monday. So, made it tough for sure. Um, it's, it's kind of on me for uh, I, I'm gonna put the majority of the blame on me on this one uh, not my opponents so uh, I do apologize for that and, uh, and yeah that's that's pretty much all I wanted to say I just wanted to apologize for those things also uh, Nexus uh, was one of the first youtubers that I watched I did mention this at the end of the last video if you didn't catch that but Nexus was one of the first uh, Pokemon youtubers that I watched uh, and it is an honor to be playing him and uh, I do wish him good luck and uh, have fun my friend but uh, let's get into the match and let's see what Nexus brought for us so he's got Zoroark as expected Primarina which punches holes uh, Mega Venusaur Celesteela uh, Zygarde and Mimikyu so literally he brought the six that I sort of expected to come the only one that was sort of questionable for me was the Venusaur because it allows um, it allows me to, to be able to do a lot uh, against him, for example, get in my Runiclus and get up screens, get in my Lunal and just psychic him, uh, as his only immunity is the, uh, the Zoroark, he always has to be careful of the potential Moongeist Beam or Ice Beam coming out uh, on that turn, and uh, it also gives me Torn rather reliably. I considered putting Volt Switch on Cobalion to, uh, to help that out, to get me out against the uh, the Venusaur, but I figured that the most likely switch into Cobalion was going to be the Zygarde, uh, if it did, uh, if it did in fact come, which it should have, so I decided to, to go with Close Combat and Iron Head instead, and Toxic to be able to cover the, uh, the Zygarde, so, um, definitely the last mana, the, not the last mon, but the only mon on his team that I didn't expect to come was Mega Venusaur, I felt like he had better offensive options against me, maybe as a defensive wall, uh, made a lot more sense, he needed to, uh, to stop, uh, sort of my T-Tar, maybe my uh, my Mawile from being able to absolutely uh, wreck through his team. So definitely makes sense in a way. But uh, but yeah, that's the team he's bringing. I'm looking at this team uh, and I'm thinking I can lead with Torn uh, very easily. Uh, if Primarina specs, I'm going to knock it off turn one and uh, I'm going to get rid of those. And that's going to be uh, good for me because he's not going to be able to kill me with any one move. And I'll be able to U-turn out after or hard switch. And then the specs are gone, so we're all good. We can go into either Lunala or Reuniclus and be able to take its hit, uh, its next hit very well. Unless it's Rocking Shadow Ball, then it's going to be a little bit more of an issue, obviously. Uh, but uh, but definitely good for me. The Zoroark, obviously, if it's Scarfed, it can U-turn out first. If it's uh, if it's lead matchup, he doesn't know if I'm Scarfed. He might not want to risk that. Uh, so that's that's really good there. Venusaur obviously is scared out immediately. Uh, Celesteela, I want to knock off as early as possible. Zygarde, I can just go for an Icy Wind. Uh, but Mimikyu as a lead is definitely something that I want to cover, uh, because if I can get off a U-turn on it immediately and break its disguise, we're looking super good for the rest of the game. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead off with Torn here. As uh, Nexus is going to challenge us, and as Envy would say, this may not may or may not be his first mistake. Um, we're going to send out Torn, and uh, Nexus is going to send out his Mimikyu, turn one. Um, we see Cumrad come out. And uh, I'm, like I said, I'm just going to U-turn immediately. Um, I'm thinking here he's not going to want to get his disguise broken, but we're going to get initiative on whatever he goes into. So he's going to switch out. He's going to go into Primarina on the U-turn. It's going to do about 15% to this thing. And uh, we are going to get in our Lunala because no one move that uh, Primarina can go for can knock out Lunala with Shadow Shield. Uh, if it's Specs Shadow Ball, it'll do about a max of 83% to us. So I'll be able to get off two Moongeist Beams, assuming this thing has any speed and not uh, full HP. I can two-hit KO it from here. So I'm going to go for the Moongeist Beam, and it turns out that he actually is max HP. 
So uh, it is a roll uh, to kill, potentially. It's, it's a roll in my favor, uh, but uh, especially after this damage. But it's still a roll. He goes for Moonblast. Had he gotten the special attack drop here, it could have been a little bit bad, but he does not. And I'm going to be able to go for another Moonguys meme here. So he's now going to go into his Celesteela. Turns out that this thing is Max Fizdef and not Max Spidef. So this Moonguys meme is actually going to do a considerable amount of damage. It's going to do about 40% to the Steela. And uh, we're just going to get off this attack here. Bring him down to about 60. He's going to get some leftovers. So we do see that he's lefties. And uh, we're just going to go for another Moonguys Beam if he decides to protect, so be it. But uh, we're going to try to uh, to wear this thing down as much as possible. Put it in Cobalion close combat range, potentially. Uh, even in range of uh, Torn's Life Orb knockoff later. Or uh, Titar's uh, Thunder Punch is definitely uh, an option as well. So he's going to bust out the Toxic here. I'm thinking, okay, he could be Heavy Slam, Toxic, Leech Seed. Uh, and protect. Uh, if he is protect, then I'm going to take another round of poison, unfortunately, here. But then he has to switch into a Moon, moon Guys Beam again. So I'm just going to go for another one here. And it turns out he actually does not have protect, or he didn't click it. I'm not sure which of the two. But we are going to knock out the Steely here by turn 5. So this is already really good. We have a lot of damage off on the Primarina. It's about a 40%. Uh, we have some information about his team because his Celesteel is gone. And so is, uh, well, his Primarina is at 40, which means if his Zorar comes out uh, as Primarina and it's at full, we'll know. So here comes Mimikyu. Uh, I'm going to pause right here. And uh, I'm going to switch out, as you can see. I'm going to go into uh, Cobalion on this turn um, because... I'm, I'm debating. Uh, I'm looking at his team. Like I said, Celesteel is gone. Primarina is at 40, so this could be the Zoroark. Uh, considering that it's very unlikely he would disguise his Venusaur or his Zygarde as Zoroark, I don't see why he would. Um, the most likely candidate is Mimikyu. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense, because it's something that, uh, as a Zoroark, he can catch my Cobalion, potentially, or just my switch into Mimikyu uh, in general. Um, just be able to... Uh, to catch it with a, a coverage move for sure so i'm gonna switch out here and i'm going to go into Co cobalion and um we're gonna get it in here if he goes for a play rough i take very little and i'll be able to get up my rocks or go for a toxic either or but he actually goes for dark pulse so this is in fact the zoroark so we're gonna take uh not too much from uh from the dark pulse about 28 ish percent we're gonna get some leftovers here and we're gonna be able to go for a close combat and it's either this thing dies or he switches into something else either way i'm getting two turns of leftovers recovery which is quite nice he's gonna go into primarina he's going to sack it right here because this close combat is actually gonna kill from this range uh no surprise there i do have some attack investment as well as the fact that i'm at plus one and primarina is very frail on the physical uh, physically defensive side uh it's going to drop to close combat so down goes the prim and uh, we're now sitting at 6-4 to four by turn 7, so this is uh, this is great for us. Uh, no complaints here, as now he's going to bring in END, and this spells the end. This is, uh, this is very scary, because Zygarde's in, and I'm going to switch out immediately, and I'm going to go into my, um, into my Salamence. Now, I considered making this thing Habanberry, but I knew there was the option of him running Stone Edge, so I decided not to. He's going to go for Dragon Dance here. Uh, looking back at it, maybe I should have toxic with Cobalion, but Mim Mimikyu is still in the back at full. I can't really risk that, and I brought this thing for Zygarde, so I'm going to switch it in. If he has Outrage, he's going to lock into it, and that's great, and we're going to die. <laughs> so down goes Salamence, did absolutely nothing but get off and Intimidate, but that means he's at neutral, which is really good, because after I bring in my Lunala here uh, and go for an Ice Beam, if I knock him out, great. If I don't, if he has a lot of HP investment and he lives, uh, then whatever, but he's actually Yachi. He ends up being Yachi Berry, which is a, a pretty good bring. Uh, I watched Nexus' side already. Uh, I know that this was actually a miss bring. He wanted Haban Berry on the, uh, on the Zygarde so that he wouldn't get swept by, uh, by Salamence, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, but he's actually Yachi, and this ends up saving him because uh, my Lunala being a Scarf going for Ice Beam on his choice on his uh, Outrage locked Zygarde is not able to kill him, and in fact, it's going to give him his 100% form, which is really bad <laughs> because now this thing has extra bulk, it's at plus one speed, uh, and it's basically unkillable for my team right now. I don't have a single move on my team that will one shot this thing from where it ends up after it gets its recovery. So, except for Torrens, Icy Wind, it's the only option I have. He's at neutral, he's not going to knock me out with anything. So I'm going to go for the Icy Wind here. He's going to switch into his uh, Mimikyu. 
and he's going to take this Icy Wind. His Mimikyu, which we of course have confirmed by this point, is actually the Zoroark, and that is what came out, is the Zoroark. We're going to go for an Icy Wind, and we're going to lower its speed, meaning that if he is Scarfed, I'm going to outspeed him, and I'm going to knock him out with a U-turn if he decides to switch. He's either going into Zygarde, which now has no speed boost, which is fine, I can bring in Reuniclus and, uh, and Reflect, um, or I can... Uh, or he brings in the uh, the Venusaur on a U-turn, which is fine as well. I can just uh, go into Reuniclus once again, or he goes into his Mimikyu, uh, in which case I break into the skies and bring back in Cobalion, and this time I would actually go for a Toxic to try to wear down the uh, the, the Zygarde for sure. But I'm going to knock out the uh, the Zoroark with a U-turn. I'm going to go into Cobalion, and uh, once again he brings in his Zygarde. Once again I considered clicking Toxic, but I told myself, nope, the Mimikyu is still in the back. <laughs> you're going to switch right here, and you're going to go into Reuniclus. If he outrages outright, great play. Uh, not really much I could do about it, but he does go for a Dragon Dance. I can live plus one Dragon Dance even from Max Adamant, so we're fine. And I'm going to go for a Reflect right here. If he chooses to go for another Dragon Dance, he's back down to neutral after my Reflect goes up, so we're fine. Uh, he's going to go for a couple of Outrages. I'm going to go for a couple of Psychics and really leave him low uh, to the point where Torn can come in after because I have an 8-turn Reflect and once again just go for Icy Wind. And then he'll be so low to the point where I'll be able to knock him out with Close Combat after from Cobalion, so he's no longer a switch in. But he chooses to lock into Outrage. I'm going to get up my Reflect. It wastes two turns, and I have six turns left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Tyranitar here, Cronovi, knowing that he locked into Outrage, knowing that he would give me uh, the Weakness Policy boost if he goes for 1,000 arrows. Um, I'm going to go for an Ice Punch straight up, and he's going to switch. And he's going to go into Venusaur, and this is super effective right now. So he's going to take about half health. Um, had he stayed in to go for a thousand arrows, like I said, I would have gotten the weakness policy boost and it would have killed off his Zygarde, but I actually get a freeze here on his Venusaur, which I want to pause once again. This seems pretty big, right? Because now his Venusaur is in here against the Dragon Dance Titar, it cannot move, and I'm about to go for a DD. However, if he were to go for a, uh, Giga Drain on the next turn... Uh, which it turns out he did not have Sleep Powder on this set. If he were to go for a Giga Drain and give me my Weakness Policy, Giga Drain would do about 35%. I would get my Weakness Policy, in which case my Crunch would then kill the Venusaur guaranteed. He can't Synth up or anything because his Sand is up, so that wouldn't really accomplish much for him. So I'm going to get up the DD, going to kill off the Venusaur, and then he goes into his Mimikyu. If his Mimikyu is Z-Move, then uh, he can knock me out with the, uh, the Giga Drain damage in tandem. Uh, potentially, there, there's a chance that I would still live because of the Reflect, uh, if it's let, let's Snuggle Forever. So, and then I would break its Disguise. If I still live, he could then knock me out with potential sh Shadow Sneak after, which is fine, his Disguise is broken, and then I can go into Cobalion, he's taken two returns of Sand, which is equivalent to taking, um, which is the same thing as taking Rocks. My Iron Head would then knock him out, he would then have to go into his Zygarde. I would go for Toxic. So long as I land, even if he Dragon Dances up, I then go for an Iron Head. Uh, if he's at plus one, the Thousand Arrows uh, through Reflect is going to do about 50% uh, at plus one. I would take uh, my Leftovers back. Iron Head plus uh, Toxic would be racking up, and then eventually he would just die. If he doesn't get up to plus two, with my Reflect up, Torn lives Outrage, and I'm able to go for the Icy Wind for the Knockout, or even potentially the uh, the U-Turn, if it's enough with the Poison, so that I don't have to risk the miss, and that would be GG. So... As you can see, we do freeze him. So now it's just going to be a, fr a free Dragon Dance. It doesn't even matter. Uh, his Venusaur ends up staying asleep after this... Uh, at, not asleep, sorry. Frozen uh, after this turn as I'm going to uh, Dragon Dance up. And you guys are going to see that this Crunch doesn't kill him, but he also doesn't thaw. And like I said, unless he were Sleep Powder, this didn't really matter because the second he touched me with a Giga Drain, I would knock him out with the Crunch. This Crunch won't knock him out because I'm only at plus one. So... Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys understand uh, the what just happened here with the freeze and why it actually didn't matter. So uh, it actually even turns out that his Mimikyu was not Z Fairy. It was Ghost DMZ, Neverending Nightmare with Shadow Claw. 
So there was absolutely no chance unless he crit me with either move being the Giga Drain or he'd have to actually crit me with the Giga Drain and the play rough or just not crit me with the Giga Drain but still crit the play rough after uh, to be able to knock me out. Either way, I'd still break the disguise and I'd go through the same motions that I just explained. Uh, so I'm going to bust his disguise. He's going to go for a play rough. Uh, he doesn't get an attack drop. I don't think it would have mattered because I think I still knock out... Uh, the Mimikyu with a plus two crunch uh, from here, and then uh, Zygarde dies to Ice Punch. It takes a max of uh, 49, I think, when I'm at neutral. So uh, crunch here is easily going to knock out this Mimikyu, and then I believe Sand goes down. Reflect would have gone down the next turn, uh, and then we're going for uh, for an Ice Punch here on the Zygarde to end the game. And that's really going to be it. Uh, there's not much more to say. I think that we played this game well. I think that Nexus played it well as well. He got in his Zygarde at opportune moments. Uh, I really just think that uh, that prep was a little bit stronger on our side. I know that uh, Nexus didn't have all the time in the world to prep. He didn't really give it his all uh, with his prep this week. So uh, it's understandable. But he definitely still brought a strong team nonetheless. And I think that Nexus is a serious threat when he wants to be. So um, throwing no shade at the guy. He, he did a great job. Uh, and it's only a 3-0. It's, it's not like a dominant victory or anything. I really just, uh, I kind of got lucky with the freeze for sure because if he got off the, uh, the Giga Drain damage, uh, there was a chance that his play rough, assuming it crit, uh, would knock out my T-Tar. So there, there was always that. And if he was actually Z-Fairy, if he would have brought that over Z-Ghost, I understand why he brought Z-Ghost. It makes a lot of sense because Lunala is a threat. Uh, and, uh, I think that he thought that Mimikyu outsped Lunala, but Lunala actually outspeeds Mimikyu. Um, but I wasn't max speed, so we would have speed died. Uh, so Z Ghost still makes sense there. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's it. Um, uh, not much more to say there. Uh, great job to, to Nexus. And, uh, I think that once again, we did, we did a good job this week. And being 6-2 now, I think your Montreal Habsols are pretty much a shoe in for playoffs. Uh, but I don't want to speak too soon because Danza's really, uh, doing work and catching up to us. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but, uh, but as long as we get one more win in these last two weeks, which I'm hoping we do, uh, we play Randy, uh, on Sunday. So, uh, well, I actually play Randy tomorrow, <laughs> in fact, uh, Saturday, but, um, uh, but you guys will see the game on Sunday and, uh, I don't know, man, uh, he's got a super scary team. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I still haven't built for it. I'm about to, but, uh, but I'm, I'm terrified. It's, it's a very, very tough matchup. And uh, I'm not looking forward to it, but we'll, we'll try our best. And if we win that one, then we're in playoffs, guaranteed. Uh, there's no way that Danza could pass us. And uh, as it stands right now, I'd have to lose my two games, 4-0, and Danza would have to win both his games, 1-4-0 and 1-5-0, to pass us in standings. Uh, and there's only 10 weeks this season as well, so that, that would be the end of the season. Um, so I think that that's unlikely to happen, but I'm still going to try to keep it so close that it doesn't happen. Like, if I'm going to lose to Randy, I'm going to try to lose only 1-0 or 2-0. So that if, uh, when I play Necro on week 10, if I lose, once again, if I only lose 1-0 or 2-0, I'm fine. And if I win, then we're in playoffs anyway. So that's going to be it, guys. Uh, of course, go ahead and check out Nexus in the description down below. Uh, his side of the battle is very interesting. I watched it. Uh, very funny commentary. I, I love watching Nexus's videos. Uh, he's a great content creator, and you guys should definitely go and check him out. Uh, link is always in the description uh, down below. Make sure to leave a like for us if you did enjoy this game. Uh, comment down below what you thought, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your first time on the channel or otherwise. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.